everyone, today we're here to test my last idea about how to improve the range on walks now. But just before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsor today, who is PCB Way. PCB Way, as its name suggests, can prototype and assemble PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you probably already know this. But with open source hardware becoming more of a thing, you'll often be able to simply get the Gerber file, which contains the PCB design, and send this to PCB Way to get your own PCBs made. Essentially, making your own PCBs without knowledge of PCB design. But it's not just PCBs. CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing and injection moulding are just some of the extra things they can do, and in materials that are way out of reach for most hobbyists. So if you want to look at having them make something for you, check them out at pcbway.com. Now back to the video. Hello, welcome to the windy field where it's really gusting and everything's getting blown around, including me. We are here once again with the Chimera 7 and we're on the last idea about how to improve the video quality and that was replacing the UFL antenna with a little UFL to SMA antenna so I could use this very large left-hand polarized Cherry 2 antenna from Rush FPV and we're going to try that out. It's also a slight accidental test of the Radio Master Nomad module which you might have seen before. I've I've flown another quad and I have to say I don't think these dual band antennas are the best. At a sort of kilometre my DBM was around sort of minus 95 which it shouldn't be. But this is what we're going to try and do. We basically go to about 1.2 kilometres, we turn around, we have a look at the video quality. We're not really concerned about the quality of the signal as, as long as it doesn't drop out of the sky of course. That would be bad. Um, I still haven't looked at the problem with the slight vibration. I'll, I'll still get to do that at some point. Anyway, let's see how this looks and then we can compare with the previous setups uh, looking back to see how the video looked and see if it's improved or degraded. Let's see. Okay, so off we go into the wind and let's see what happens. If you've been watching my videos, you would have noticed that the last two were also on the same day. I took three quads with me and I flew them all in the same conditions. And one interesting thing about it was the previous two quads were on analog, which I generally think it's like, it's okay flying analog. But as soon as you flick over to walk snow, you're like, oh my God, I can, I can see everything. Why is everything so clear and lovely? It's, uh, it is quite, quite bad trying to go back to analog once you've been used to using something like walk snail like a DJI or, or anything else it's it's quite a difference now I was saying about like how I wasn't convinced about the dual band antennas on the nomad module but on this particular one I can actually see the amount of power we're putting out and it's 10 milliwatts and it's 10 milliwatts all the way out there so it's clearly not a problem with the dual band antennas so I just need to sort out the receivers on those two other quads and see what the issue is. Right, we're starting to get to the business end of what's happening now. So I'm keeping an eye on that signal down on the left-hand side, which goes up to maximum of four. I would expect it to drop to about three. As I remember it, I think previously using the direct UFL antenna, it, it only dropped down to three. I didn't think it went to two at all. And on this occasion I do notice that it drops down further so one of the issues we're using the pigtail is are you introducing more loss by having this pigtail even though you get a bigger antenna as opposed to having a direct connection UFL with a shorter antenna um, and I'll compare that when I come to look at them side by side but if you look very carefully here you will see that we get a little flicker of focus mode coming on. This is when the signal drops to two. It's not on for long and then it seems to recover, but it is definitely there, which is interesting. People have asked me why I'm using um, focus mode. And aside from the fact it kind of warns me that the signal is getting lower, and you see we've got it on the turn there, uh, it's also a good way of keeping the latency very consistent. So that if you didn't have it, the latency could go up and I prefer blocks at the sides rather than uh, the latency spiking. Uh, at this point we're back on sort of signal three and four and it looks good from there um, so no no apparent issues and it was it was good fun to fly. I actually put two batteries through this just flying around. I did manage to get to the point where I got the 
ELRS power up from 10 milliwatts to one watt. And But to do that, I have to go right by the side of myself out high behind some trees. It was interesting to see it flick up and down though. Anyway, let's compare this side by side with the previous uh, ideas I had about how to improve the walk snail range. Okay, so let's compare. I've tried to sync these up as best as possible, but previously it wasn't that windy, so I was flying twice as fast. And what you can see here is the directly connected UFL connector when we're using the Rush FPV one doesn't ever drop into focus mode. It never drops the signal to, th uh, to two. It's not quite, you know, scientific because I've got slightly different heights and different atmospheric conditions. Uh, but down below you can see the original walk snail antenna setup, which has also got the, the battery on top, which makes it even worse. But I feel we've got vast improvements over that <laughs> at least. But I guess what I'll be doing is going back to that direct UFL. So it looks like that SMA pigtail has introduced too much loss to be of, of more use than it was before. The only problem I had with that uh, UFL connector is it kind of had this locking thing built around it which didn't fit in very well with the walk snail thing but I'll have a go at sorting that out and uh, making it better. But there you go that is the end of my testing here I believe so I'll be going with the Rush FPV UFL left hand polarized Jerry antennas. Okay, not quite finished the video yet because I just wanted to sort this out and uh, show you. You can see here we've got the little UFL to SMA adapter and which is apparently causing worse losses than using a direct UFL connector. And the problem tends to be with this UFL connector, you see it's got this little bit that sort of locks in which is a bit incompatible. I will show you why. Okay, now we've got this exposed, you can see where this fits and what you get on a walk snail thing is this little protective plate that fits over there and we'll keep the UFL connector from coming off, which is great. Unfortunately, with the one we've got for the direct UFL connector, with this sort of protection thing, the, the problem is that is very hard to get on there. You have to move the thing downwards to a certain position. You can just about get it on and then the protection bracket won't come on. But I did find that just a few minutes using a pair of tweezers just to lift the sides up there and there will give you a completely clear one. So we should be able to mount this a lot easier. So you can see we've got the UFL connector nicely on there and let's just install the protection shield, which then looks like that. And I hope to hell I don't have to do this again because the underneath of these has got these little nuts that fall out and they're a right pain to put in. So I'm gonna put this back together. I'm gonna to take the power lead and go underneath so I don't have to go over the top. Now I've decided on going to the bottom, but yeah, let's just finish putting it together. There you go, all back together and I've just, as I said, rooted that underneath now. I'm going to keep the battery on the underside so it's less chance to block the signal. UFL to SMA sounded like a good idea, massive antenna, but apparently the, the drops there were not as good as the gains we got from the actual antenna itself. So just for you guys, in case you haven't watched the previous ones before, we started out with the regular walk snail antenna and the battery on the top and the regular antennas on the goggles. And that was the worst situation. Perhaps the biggest upgrade we had was changing out the antennas on the goggles themselves. That was really quite good. But we got definitely an improvement by using this UFL Rush FPV Cherry antenna over the actual Walk Snail original. That is the best setup. Thought this would be better, but not. It's a shame they don't do even longer antennas, but you know, you can't have it all. And of course, what we did is we moved the battery from the top to the bottom. Therefore, we had less chance of that blocking great big thing there for the antenna. So uh, a few things I've tried out and I'm really happy with this setup now. So I hope if you guys are watching and you're having any issues getting reasonable range out of walks now, this might help you. Many thanks for Rush FPV who kept sending over different antennas for me to try. You'll see some descriptions at the bottom. And thanks to iFlight who replaced a load of bits in the Chimera when it was having problems. It seems to be flying a lot better now, but I will be back to try and sort out that vibration issue, see if we can do a bit of black box recording and see if we can figure out what the problem is. Hope that was helpful and I will catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.